I've come up to a lovely seaside town in Scotland called Montrose. A long time ago I got tipped off about a very early Audi UR Quattro Turbo that's been sat since the 90s dormant. And today we're going to dig it out. Hopefully we're going to strike the five cylinder turbo up for the first time in years. This is a car that's very special to me. It was always a hero car of mine. Come along with us for the ride. I've got the BFF, the barn find fleece on. This is a barn find edition of The Late Break Show. If you're wondering about this, I had to bring this with me. This I got given by my grandparents. I think I was six, it was 1985. I've kept this ever since. It meant so much to me. It was such an exciting car. It was the model of what I was watching on TV and rallying. And I know I ruined it by painting it with gold pen. We'll gloss over that. But it was genuinely four wheel drive. And it had working headlights, rally lights. And I've always, always admired the UR Quattro. I've never owned a full Quattro, I've owned a Coupe GT, and I've still got this. But today we're going to see, hopefully, a really good example of an early car, an early right-hand drive car from 82. Let's go and have a look. So this is Jason. Hi, Jason. Hello. Thanks, thanks so much for getting in contact with me in the first place. Yeah, no problem. Um, this is the garage where the Audi is. It is indeed. And how long has it been in there? It's about 28 years, untouched. 28 years? Yes. And And... I know you obviously had to have opened the garage to have taken the pictures to send to me for me to know about the car. I believe that's the one and only time in that, that whole time that it's, that's been open in the 28 years. And you said to me that the, gar the door nearly fell off when you managed Yeah, the, 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 the springs were so rotten that, that, that the garage nearly fell, the door nearly fell on my head when I, when I first opened it and I had to hold it up. So. so this was your brother's car? It was, yes. And, and you, you, you lost your brother, was it last year or the yes, year before? Yes, last year, yeah. And yeah. you don't seem to know why he still had the car, or...? It's, it's, it's an absolute mystery. Um, he, one day, apparently, he just drove it down here, reversed it in, took the wheels off, um, put blocks under it, took the brakes off, things like that, bits and pieces, shut the garage, and that was the end of it. And any time, you know, over, the, over that 28 years, any time that me and my friends mentioned it, you know, what about the Quattro, he got all quite grumpy and things, you know, and he really? says, never do you mind, he says, it's fine where it is. So. Really? And that's where it's remained to, to, till now, you know. Well, let, we, we, we've, got to have a, we've got to have a little look at this. We've got to have a little, yeah. little look. You've, yeah. got, you've got the padlock. You... I do, yeah. It's just tucked away on a, a line of garages down a, down a, down a no-through road, and... It just goes to show, you'd look at this garage door and you'd go, can't be anything special. And here we go. Yeah, oh, it. look. My there word. Look at it. Yeah. Body kit and all. Yes. <laughs> that car is a July 82 production UR Quattro. What that means is it's one of the first right-hand drive cars. They didn't start production until around that time in 82. So although the car came out in 80, or was launched in 80, everything up until that point was left-hand drive. Oh. <laughs> Wait, let's prop the garage okay. door open and then, okay. and then have a, dig a, a, a deeper dig. Yes. It's got the early wheels as well. I've just seen them stacked at the side there. Yeah, apparently they are uh, Fuchs alloys. They, are. they weren't standard. This colour, and those wheels, that is how the car was launched at the Geneva Motor Show, 1980. There's some period photos of it on the plinth, alpine white, with those rims. Okay, so because of the fact that we've picked one of the five days that Scotland has glorious sunshine, <laughs> it's really bright out here and it's really dark in here, there's no electricity. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on getting it on its, we're gonna focus getting it on its wheels, getting it off these wooden blocks that it's on, and hopefully it will be uh, freewheeling enough to get it out of here, and we can have a really good look in detail at the condition here. As you can see, it's not moved in some time. Oh, th th you showed me, it's the last Taxius, 1994. 1994, yeah, indeed. Last on the road in 94. Yeah. I really hope that you can get that, it in. That despite being so close to the sea, and that's the thing, like, 
like, like you saw from the intro, the sea is just over there. So you obviously get a lot of weather. For sure, yeah. A lot of salt, hopefully, yeah. sitting in there. It might have escaped the worst of that. We'll, we'll, we'll soon see in the next hour or so. If you haven't already subscribed to the Late Break Show, where I typically do a barn find every month, do us a favour, subscribe. You can even become a Patreon if you want. You get early access to the videos and extra information, background story on barn finds like this and other vids that I do. So in my unbiased opinion, I think it's a really good idea to become a Patreon. Just saying. Do you know if your brother fitted this body kit? No, it was, it was bought with that kit on it. Was it? Yeah. And your brother bought this car in? I'm not sure of the year, I can't remember the year. Can't but a long time before 94? Oh yeah, yeah, he had it. I think he probably had it maybe four or five years, I think. Right. Yeah. And you said he used to sometimes pick you up from school with it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was a bit of a thing then. Seeing an Audi UR Quattro, they were, they were, I mean, it was extremely it was. rare even then. You know, I bet it was. There was quite a crowd of folk used to come and just to have a look at it and listen to it. Really. It was the list, yeah. yeah oh, this, a white, a white Quattro turning up. Yeah. To pick you up from school would have been quite cool. Yeah, it was quite good. Yeah. Now you know what they say that you shouldn't meet your heroes, but I did actually a, a while ago now, 12, 13 years ago. I got the chance to drive an early one of these, the Audi UK own, a heritage car, and it was extremely exciting. You forget, this was a 200 horsepower car when it came out in 1980. 200 horsepower, turbo, that iconic five cylinder noise with four wheel drive. Four wheel drive system that was derived from something called the VW Iltis, which is this really awkward, quite unknown military four by four. And they were testing this front wheel drive coupe in Sweden. And the sort of crew car was an Iltis. And basically everyone went, hang on a minute. The Iltis can go through everything. It's just a bit slow. It's only 75 horsepower. But maybe we could use the guts of the Iltis under a sexy body shell, a coupe. And that is when rallying and four wheel drive cars changed forever. So was your brother a bit of a car nut then? Yeah, he was a big car fan. He had he had quite a quite a number of cars. I couldn't count the amount of cars that he had. But he really? always he always had. He never had super luxurious things that were unattainable. It was always attainable cars that he got. He had sort a of Porsche 924, and Saab 900 Carlson. And oh, Carlson. And That's a cool car. Yeah, Nissan 300. Yeah, oh, is that The fair lady one, yeah. Yeah. So he's had quite a, a number of cars. He liked his coupes. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I reckon if you're a viewer of this channel and you're under 30, this will mean nothing to you. <laughs> but if you're my age or a bit older, these, I don't know why, these were like promotional, like giveaway things in the 80s, <laughs> weren't they? They were, yeah. Look, what's this? Brownlee timber and building materials. There you go. It's a free promotional, what did you call them? Like little fuzzy bugs or something? <laughs> I don't know. Bloody things. I used to have them on my bedroom wall. I'm a... <laughs> this is why I always wear steel toed boots or shoes. Because with when you've got no wheel studs, you've got nothing for the wheel to hold on to. One side back on its, on its rims. It's dusty, authentically. Uh, which proves it's dry. I mean, all the leaves in here are bone dry. All the litter is authentically dry. But uh, yeah, it's a bit tight on this side. But at least I haven't got to pull three decades of, you know, detritus off the top of it, which I do sometimes on these. If you've watched previous barn finds, you might know what I'm talking about. Keeping it, keeping it authentically Scottish slash cliche. <laughs> a bit of iron brew there. I can't bloody see. Difficult, yeah. yeah. 
Oh, oh here we go, Johnny. I think I've got a stake. Oh, oh shitting hell. <laughs> Just have a stud. This would have gone on in 20 seconds. It would have been, yeah. After all this, it might just fire up. It might just feel sorry for us and go, do you know what? You think so? No, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm just trying to be optimistic. Yeah. Right, we finally got it back onto its wheels and tyres, so it's now on the ground. That, that chin spoil is low. Um, and now we're hoping that the, the calipers uh, were removed and the pads were removed, so it seems to roll freely, which is great. So now we're going to try and push it out. If we can't push it out, we'll drag it out with the vehicle. But most importantly, I found this. And this is most importantly, vital. <laughs> I've only gone and found a bottle of Wold's Old Spice. Check that bad boy out. <laughs> In white to match the car. <laughs> Beautiful. Whoever was uh, in the garage last made sure they, they were smelling right. <laughs> Right, let's get the UR out. Okay. See if it will actually come out. Ready? Go. It's just to get up that little slope. In about six inches time, I can get behind it and use the wall. Right. Right, this time. Bloody hell. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I found another relic. Look, it's a marathon. Wow. Now that's real. Hey. They haven't been called marathons since what? 1991, 92. One, two, three. Whoa. Come on. Oh, sugar. It's got a bit of a lock on, I think. She's out. Oh. Oh. Even the dog is ecstatic about it. This is exciting, isn't it? Beautiful day. We've managed to get the UR out into the sunshine. What's bizarre is, this went in there and we think 94. So it went in there before the internet was invented. And we've brought it out and putting the information out on the internet. This car has sat all that time in there with just a load of litter and leaves waiting to come out again. We don't entirely know its condition. We don't entirely know why it, why it stopped being used regularly. So we're gonna pop the bonnet in a minute. We'll probably maneuver it around, have a better look inside, but how beautiful is this? What a shape, what a shape. We've managed to pull the Quattro out and you can tell it's, it's been very dry in here, luckily. And there's some period litter detritus. Look, early golden wonder crisps. Look at that wrapper. <laughs> Look, that's old. Check this. Can you see that on camera? A marathon. That is what Snickers used to be called. And I think they, ch I remember when they changed, I think they changed about 90, 91. So there's that. And there's a paper here, the Farm Journal, April the 7th, 1990. It's just sat there on the shelf. This is really good in here. And it's good in here, I suspect, because that garage doesn't have windows, so there's no sun damage. Yeah. There's no UV damage on the plastic dash top, which usually sort of bakes. Yeah. The, these seats, the, uh, the old Zebra Vela seats are amazing. Even the headliner's good. That same matching cloth. Yeah. Honestly, it's lovely. Yeah, amazing, I, yeah. And I can't see, I can't see evidence of mice, which is, no, Good, you always, I don't think there is. You always worry about rodents getting in here and doing yeah. bad things. It's brilliant. Radio's missing, but it looks like they left the, your brother's left it. Alp <laughs> yeah. Alpine, Alpine. Alpine speakers front and rear. Oh. Yeah. And it don't, you know what? It doesn't have a bad smell in here. There's a bit of mold on the gator here and a bit of mold on the, the turbo steering wheel. Love, yeah. the, love the turbo font there. But it's actually all right. It's surprisingly all right. It's lovely. It's good. It's, it's, it's amazing to see it. And I'm really pleased that someone's done the correct way of removing <laughs> yeah. the magic tree. You don't take it all the way out of the packet. You take it out in stages. 
yeah. is already at the first stage in Rose Musk. Rose Musk. <laughs> I think I used to know a Rose Musk. <laughs> uh, so this yeah. is this is really really this is a bit of a, a time warp. What's the mileage? I didn't even check. I think it. it's ninety four. I think. Yeah, ninety three four thousand seven hundred seventy six. Yeah. And there's the boost gauge. Oh. Yeah. So that is really really good. No damp or anything. It's amazing. When we pulled it out, the back seat was tipped up because the battery is on the passenger side rear and, yeah. and the battery tray looks solid. Yeah, there's, there's nothing there, no evidence. No, there. no. You can see where this body kit was riveted on yeah. the top. Now, we don't know what the sills are like under the body kit. We do, I think it's, I think the car was painted at some point. Very possibly. Because it's got the body coloured mirrors, which it shouldn't have. It should have yeah. black mirrors. I think the boot spoiler should be black. Yeah. And obviously it's had this the, the chin spoiler and everything. The chin added. spoiler's on it, exactly. Yeah. But how cool is this? And we haven't even looked at the engine bay yet. Not so yet, no. It's time to have a look at the engine bay. Okay. Okay. Okay, here it is. The WR2144CC inline five. Now this is the bit that gets interesting. The photos that you sent me this is how it was with a piece of newspaper on the top. What we didn't know, what you didn't know, because you hadn't touched it. Because yeah. I said to Jason, just don't touch it. I want it, I want it as is. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have a cover. It doesn't have a cam cover on. And you couldn't find it. No, you still I've, can't I, find I, it. No, we've, we've hunted everywhere. There's shed, there's other garage. There, there's just no sign of it. And, and I have no idea why, why you would have taken it off, whether, whether something went wrong, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah. So we, it's a bit mysterious. The, the nuts are along here, yeah, the, the filler, filler top's there, yeah. but yet yeah, that's missing. So on the way up to, um, to Scotland, I popped in um, to see a, a member of the Audi, Classic Audi community, and he is, he's given me one to bring up, to put on, to see, about, see if we can turn the car over and fire it up. This is the part that Jason said was missing and he hadn't realized until, 24 hours or so before we were leaving to come up to Scotland. The car was missing its its engine cover and we don't really know why. Like I said, I haven't seen the car yet. So I'm borrowing one of these from the chap who's got this incredible lockup of cars. He doesn't want to be on camera, but the cars, you, you, you look this way, you see the front wheel drive coupe GTs, like the one I used to have, I used to have one of these, loved it. And then this way, really early Quattros, look down there. Again, really early, quad headlight, 1982. And then down there, later car, I think an 89. Pearl, white car, beautiful. And then you look over there and look, there's just, there's GTs and Quattros and turbos everywhere. So I've got the rocket cover. I'm hopefully going to be on the way up to Scotland getting some plugs, distributor cap, rotor arm, just in case. Uh, I'm going to probably just run some oil over the, the camshaft before putting this on, but that means we have a chance of being able to turn it over, see if we can get a spark, check the fuel delivery situation. We're one step further to knowing whether the Quattro will fire up today, <laughs> to coin a term. Yeah. But yeah, it's about who you know, isn't it? And I have, to, I have to say thank you very much to the classic Audi forum. I'll put a link in on the screen for it because it's, it's, if you like old Audis, it's brilliant. So uh, Jason's dug out some paperwork of the Quattro. We've got the owner's book, which is cool. And some old MOTs. Old MOTs, which do back up the, um, the mileage. Yeah, that's all, all them. And then we've got various uh, repairs from just the garage that used to be over the back there. It's no longer there. Brilliant. Yeah, there look quite a lot of repairs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Must say. Uh, yeah. Well, there's loads. Good old handwritten receipts. Handwritten receipts, you can't beat it. I love all that. Yeah. And you were saying you, you've got a bill of sale of it when yeah, your brother I, bought it. I believe it's in here and it's quite funny. Oh, that's it? That's how you buy an Audi Quattro. Look, look at that. And so it shows you traded in a Starion. He traded in a Mitsubishi Starion Turbo yeah. Coupe, <laughs> uh, 1988. Yeah. Trade in Audi WPL 777Y balance 3995. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> Trading in a Starion Turbo. Yeah. Four grand. 
Wow. So that's probably all the paperwork I left to do. Yeah. I've been able to find here. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Do you remember the Starion? I can remember it vaguely, and I think he only had it something like three or four weeks. <laughs> and he was, he, was, he was either going offshore or coming back from offshore, and he saw that sitting in the forecourt up north somewhere. And, and he was like, and he's straight in and having that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm now going to phone a guy called Phil, who's a, 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 a guru of early quattros. And he's been really enthusiastic to know about the VIN of this car to find how early it is. I'm going to give him a bell because he's asked to know a bit more about it. He's quite, got quite an encyclopedic knowledge of numbers. Hello, Johnny. Hey, Phil. You all right? I'm not too bad. Not too bad. How are you? I'm good. I'm stood by the, the UR Quattro. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's nice and dry. We've pulled it out. Okay, so the, the, the VIN under the bonnet, you know, the, the little plaque on the, um, yeah, near the strut yeah, on top. The, on the offside wing. Yeah, that is W A U Z Z Z 85 Z C A 901346. Yeah, give me a, 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 a minute or two and I can decide for that. And do you want any other numbers off it while I'm stood here? Um, it, has it got the boot sticker in? The boot sticker? Yeah. Let me have a look. It's in the boot under the right hand side of the parcel shelf. Okay, so Phil wanted to know not just the VIN number, the plaque under the bonnet, but there's also a paper sticker down here on the, what is the parcel shelf, because it's a coupe. Uh, I've given him these numbers. I, I can identify that it's L90, which I think is the paint code for Alpine White. It is. is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a couple of it's, there's a couple of other options which will decode, but he needs that number, and he'll be able to tell us how old exactly, like what day this was made, how early in the production is, because we think it's a very early right-hand drive car. Hello, sorted it. It was it was built on Friday. 16th of July, 1982. 16th of July, 82? Yeah, it was a Friday. It was a Friday. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, no, it shouldn't be. As long as it wasn't a Friday afternoon one. There's no, there's no Friday afternoon cards in Germany. They're all, they, no, they were all. I know that. I know that. They made an amount of 70-ish uh, of the C chassis right and drive, almost getting in front, really, ready for... You know, the, oh, the, what? The, so this is pre-mass production, kind of like... Yeah, yeah, because it's got all the traits on of the C-chassis cars, the quad headlamps at the front, etc. Which, uh, well, it, which it should have, but these, these yeah. have been retrofitted, these oblong yeah. ones. One yeah. of the later of the first batch of 70. Yeah, and, and I know of around about the 28 or 30 that have survived, that oh. I know of. Okay. So, um, so yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool, though, right? It's, it's, yeah, still pretty rare. Yeah, I will send you some pictures, and maybe if we do get it to fire, I will send you evidence. But I'm 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 not I'm not holding out any degree of hope. We're just going to do what I can do. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, Johnny. Good old Phil. Yeah, brilliant. So there we go. Just to recap then, plugs out, check those, clean those, they seem okay. The distributor cap on the rotor arm, taking those off, clean those, seems okay. Rocker cover was a little bent, but we've managed to get it bolted on, good. Top up with oil, that's good. Put some oil in it, hooray. Clean the terminals on the, the coil, and I've just removed the banjo off the, um, the fuel system, where the fuel comes in and gets delivered to the injection system here. So now we're going to hook up the big battery, check for dash lights, and we might turn it over and see if we get fuel coming out of here. Then if we get fuel coming out of here, I'll put some fresh in, see what happens. But we don't know if the fuel pump's going to work, so. But that's what we're doing. Come on, Quattro. You may 
may now see there's more people than there were at the start of the day. Well, that's what happens with uh, Quattro communities. You, you attract other people. John here is a local and also a, an, an, an avid Quattro person. He thought, I'll come down, see if I can lend a hand. And uh, we, we, we have accidentally dropped a washer. That's why we're looking for a washer. Once that washer's found, we can turn the key, see if we get the dash lights and see if we can purge through some fuel, if the fuel pump works. That's the fuel injection system there. Airbox is deep on the left. It's a busy engine bay on the left, a quattro. I forgot how busy it is here. On the right, less busy. I think we've hit a point now where you can do the honors of turning the ignition on. Okay. Seeing if we get dash lights. Yeah. And I'll see if the fuel pump starts and then there yeah. should be a fuel pissing out of here. Okay. If there is any fuel, if yes. the fuel pump works. Right. So do the honours. Okay. And, and shout words of glee if, if we get lights on the dash. Okay. That would be quite cool. Dashboard lights? Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Cool. Go for a turn. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so th not even a click of a solenoid then, was no it? No solenoid. There's the oil filter, yeah. the starter, the starter yeah. solenoid on the side, you see? Yeah, see it now. Now that, if that's not clicking, then that's no, not delivering power to this. Yeah, yeah. So that might be, again, it could be a, a connection, it could be a rusty connection, or it could be worse. I might just bop it with the, the, the wheel spider. I hate to admit defeat, but we've tried everything to get it fired up before nightfall and the Quattro will not start. I think it's a solenoid problem on the starter motor. Could be some wiring somewhere that I haven't diagnosed. So unfortunately, that's the bad news. Unfortunately, we can't get it fired up. The good news is, is for the first time since 1994, it's out in the open. Yeah. The tires have, been, uh, have managed to stay up for a little bit. Almost. And what a glorious thing, just seeing another early Quattro Turbo. A, a true icon, you know. A, 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 car you, a car that just sort of like, you just keep thinking about. For me, it's just a really, really special car. And I hope that this, I'm guessing that this is gonna go to somebody else who will- I hope so. Hopefully put it back on the road. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. If, um, if this car comes up for auction, I will put the details in the description below. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show, dusting off a relic, finding some old crisp packets. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to uh, the other guys. Thanks to John. Um, thanks to Phil in the, in the club for helping get an idea of how old this car truly is and, uh, and what sort of a life it's led. Thank you for getting in contact. Yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. And it's been cool, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been great. It's been a great day. Just to see the headlining in that, it was worth travelling up to Scotland. Because <laughs> yeah. it is a thing, it's a thing of its time and it's wonderful. <laughs> but uh, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, please subscribe. If you want to support the channel through Patreon, you get an early view of these videos and you'll get extra information that I'll write about cars like this. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>